Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by... This episode was brought to you by The Mythwits, a geek pop culture talk show. Every week we interview an industry guest and make with the funny. Check us out at Mythwits.com, YouTube, and iTunes, and watch us live every Monday night at 9.30pm EST. Island Dice. And by viewers like you. All right, everybody. I've been waiting to do this for a while. Just really haven't had time to do it like I wish I did. So for some of you guys who have already seen it, um, here's kind of what my table looks like. I kind of have stuff where I can pick it up and put it away and all shoved in boxes so I can mix and match terrain and switch the tops, uh, out trees, whatever, buildings, whatever I want. And I got some of my own dice that uh, I had ordered up for uh, for my own reasons, for my own use. Uh, just these are ones that came in the game, and I wanted some ones that were the malcontent ones, and I just couldn't figure out what color I wanted, so I just went with a little bit each. So I got even a little bit extra sitting there from from an order that was never filled. So, to give an idea, here's, here's some buildings and stuff that I got online. Um, I think this is from GameCraft Miniatures. Really nice. They have really thin strips that go along the side to help hold the cover the gaps up. Very well done. You got some buildings. You could put something in them, in them. And then these tops cover the gaps between the different pieces so as you're looking down you don't really see it um, very very nicely done Got little porches on them so really nice and then you see some of the miniatures you see the size here's a Battletech Marauder from ages and ages ago and here by comparison is the Robotech Glog which is basically the same miniature you see this one, it's obviously it's plastic, it's a lot lighter, a lot bigger um, in some ways. It's a little better, it's got some seams that are on the top that you can sometimes see in the light that got to be hidden and worked on, but you can set things up however you want them. Here's a, a Spartan or an Archer, depending on if you're playing Robotech or Battletech. You can see the arms, you can shift them however you want, the hips you can put them however you want, the lasers on top, you can pose them different ways. Whereas the really old 1980s Battletech miniatures had some good detail on them, but you couldn't pose them or anything. That's Well, they were lead, so honestly you could try to pose them a little bit, you just had to be careful you didn't break your miniature. Some of these you can see better than others. Here's an old Warhammer that they had from Battletech compared to the miniatures that you have in in Robotech so again you can see like there's a seam down the back and there's seams on the legs that glue did a pretty good job of sealing up um, but once these are painted those might show up a little bit more and they'll take a little bit more work to make them look nice and clean and old Battletech longbow. You can kind of see that this paint job from when I was probably 12 years old on there. And then here's the new Robotech version of the same miniature. And plastic makes it nice because they're pretty lightweight. And then compared to that, size wise, you can see some GHQ trucks and, and vehicles so 
Here's an artillery tank, you know, compared to the size of a of a giant robot. It looks almost nothing. I mean, you got some trucks, you got a big transport truck next to a, a tomahawk, and it just looks tiny in comparison. And these miniatures, actually, when you look close, I mean, you can see some really good detail on them. For something so small, it's a fabulous job of, of the detail on them. Of course, these are also metal miniatures instead of plastic ones, but really nice. And, uh, and you get some infantry, and you can see how small they are. I mean, when you get an infantry compared to to giant robot, you can see that they're just really tiny. They're, which is how it should be, but trying to paint something that small to go along with it is going to be interesting at best. At least for my high ends. And I got a couple packs, kind of mixed some together from GHQ. I got some tanks and everything. And they're actually really nice because I had a turret that I ordered. It wasn't even from them. I ordered one online. Um, some tanks and one of the turrets came busted. And so the guy refunded my money and I told GHQ, you know, hey, you mind? And they sent me a, an extra turret. So that's really nice. Really nice of them. You see, I got some couple boxes of this stuff that I got paint up, and uh, it's, I bought some, and they sent me a bunch of extra stuff for uh, for the sale that they did online. And then I have some other stuff that I plan on playing with. I got some some stamps from the kids that uh, I did a while back, and uh, the extra cannons from the artillery pods and some missiles. And I'm gonna figure out a way to, to get these mounted on here so they'll be turrets. So it'll be nice when I get them done. I gotta figure out something to put on there to hold them together, but they'll be not some nice turrets. So then also, um, I got some of these a while back from Litco, uh, little plastic markers. I got 10 red ones uh, marked one to 10 for each faction. And I got 10 green ones for the Zentradi. And they have the, the number, so you see on there has a little check mark for number one. And then the Zentradi number two. There's a little check mark with another little symbol added on. And so I got them custom made. They're about 20 bucks plus shipping to have them uh, made out and sent to me. So I got uh, basically. 10 for each, 10 or 12, I can't remember, I think it's 10 for each faction so that I can uh, mark when a squadron moves or when it hasn't moved. So over time, I gotta assemble these. These are Gen Con, Max and Miria figures that I just haven't had time to even get to because I've been assembling so many other things. So I finally got one full battle cry assembled. And you can see that it's quite a lot of figures. Some of these are extras. I have some that I got extra bases online for. Um, these are Gashapon 1 200 scale. So they're a little big, but when you put them, and remember this is a big bomber type guy. So I mean, he looks massive compared to even the Phalanx. But I've got these guys, put a, a magnet on the bottom of the base and a steel plate in there so they'll stay in there without shifting around too much. And then I got some of the old Gashapon guys who did the same thing, put a magnet on the base and put those together. And then I even found some, and those are 1-200 scale. So to give you an idea, let's get a couple of these guys out. We'll put them out here on the table. And then, sorry for bouncing around on you, but let me get so the unpainted guy is a Robotech uh, 1285 figure and as you see how big he is and then these are the the 1 200 scale Gashapon guys I hate that these guys don't stand up straight very well and then uh, so the, these ones came they're plastic they came where you just put them together to move their arms a little bit that's about it 
I glued them with hot glue to the bases and uh, they're not bad but they came pre-painted and I found them on sale so didn't pay too much for each one so I got a little collection of those I then did some playing around so you can see and here's kind of so you can see side by side but I found these ghost fighters they're Q 4000s or something like that so they're from Macross but they're pretty nice and we'll have Mac we'll have ghosts so I can use these as fill-ins for now and don't have to worry about it and these bases let me to move them around and twist them and without too much too much and they'll pop off but you could play around with those and then I also took a top of a paint can actually and scraped it down some cut it off tried to cut off meat because it's a little rough put some beads on there but you can't really tell from the top when it's when it's on the table but uh, this is a a YF19 1200 scale, so it's about the right size regardless. And uh, use that to make a, a cat's eye. So if you see it side by side to a Veritech, or let's get a, a Veritech in, in fighter mode, and you can see them side by side, you know, that's, that's a lot bigger and about the right scale when you're looking at it as a cat's eye instead of what it actually is so that works pretty well so that I got my table and uh, some printable terrain from drop zone commander I even bought some to use but uh, uh, also I got some some bridges from burn in designs that uh, Lathan Montgomery does and these are pretty nice too you can put some guys on them and uh, they're for a pretty decent price and they even have another set of bridges that you could put on there and so I even had where one of those ones had pieces messed up on them that's why I had two because that one had pieces some pieces that were broken and messed up on it and so I he sent me a replacement to uh, to handle it so in the end, I was really happy with the service that I got from them. I used to have some paper cutouts like those, but now that I got enough miniatures, I don't need to use those anymore, and I'll probably get rid of the ones that I don't need. But uh, that's a pretty quick view of, of some of the miniatures, um, some of the different guys. There's an artillery pod. I mean, the, the Zentradi are really easy to put together and uh and use you got some pretty decent variability as far as how you compose the legs and everything so i tried to do some variability with them i mean it's not like they have arms that are, or look where you can pose them in a bunch of different ways and make them look cool not like you can with some of the other miniatures so had a couple people wanting to get a quick view and that's what you got Thanks.